for me. Uh, but so also small businesses, yes. So, so tourism is about over 50% of the economy? Yes. Uh, the government and the individual, also civilians and everyone depends on tourism. For example, uh, fishermen, they do fishing, but they sell their products in hotels. Or farmers, they plant spices, which is one of the big uh, uh, agriculture in my country, spices, plantation. And uh, all these people, they sell spices to the tourists. You suffer. Yeah. Yes, that's a yes. So even for you, you can also have the chance to visit the spice farms. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Yes. In Stone Town, you can also see some spice uh, spice shops. But uh, yeah, in spice farms, you see exactly the plantation, and you learn how we grow them, how we use them as a medicine. Because most of the people in the villages, they don't really go to the hospital for small issues. Yeah, small problems. Just take some root or leaves or parts of the trees. They boil. They they are. If also they use this trick to have more children, <laughs> yes, because here still uh, investing in children is one of the most important role in the community. If you have less children, uh, you are poor. If you have more children, you are rich. And uh, people, they don't have much to be proud of themselves like uh, wealthy or money. So children. Yeah, it's like well, they have more children and this is for now still important because uh, the government, uh, they don't really take care of the old people. So people, they decided to have more children uh, for them to help them when they are very old because some of the children will be very educated, maybe they will live abroad. But at least you will have some two, three children that yeah, they'll be around taking care of you. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh -huh. it's not, uh, it looks so uh, bad upon if you have children uh, that don't take care of their parents. Uh, you know, say some will go. So in this case here, it's always some that will stay back to take care of their parents. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, people, as they go in education, yeah, or whatever, they don't have time for, yeah. like I said, the old people, that's a common thing. Yeah. And they won't help yeah. them. They won't help them. Yes. But then having a whole lot of children, if yeah. you're not responsible and you're not taking care of them, yeah, even that's in this another country, issue. That's yes. terrible. That, yeah, that's that another sense. issue because I know some people they have like twenty children. Yeah, yeah, twenty, twenty-five. Wow. Yeah, wow. for sure they don't provide. Right. So they, enough. and I say in that yeah. case you just yeah, hopefully don't. Hopefully, all know when an iPhone. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. But for food, it's not a problem in my country. Yeah. Food is not a problem. No, well, everybody farms. Yeah, everybody eats every day. I mean, the poorest family in Zanzibar, in the morning they can have very nice uh, tuna fish mm. with a piece of bread or cassava. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon, he can have like a paracuda piece of, yeah, you know. So, 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 so it's like a farm, no, it's a farm and fishing yeah. community. Yeah. yeah. Farm and fishing. It's yeah. Shame. The problem here, the poverty in my country is more in materials. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, but we still live in uh, like a community kind of. Uh, yeah, for example, if ten houses around, one guy only has TV. All these people will go to this house and watch TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, if uh, if if my family they have wedding, one of my relative, it's not only for my family. Everybody in the neighborhood will be participating in any other way to help. Yes. As well as everything, like so everybody can have. That's what even family, we live in extended family. Yeah, so, for example, if I have uh, money to pay for my niece' school fee, I will do that. Yeah, if uh, the parents don't have enough yeah, money to do that, so we live like that. Yeah, that's how yeah, we, we used to live. Some of us used to live like that. It's not possible to live just by yourself. Right. It's not possible right. at all. Yeah, you know, yeah it's we not get possible. Now. My family, my child, me, mm. me, my. Yes. Who cares about that? So that's, uh, yes. We also speak uh, Arabic a little bit. So if there is anyone here who speaks Arabic, we can have clear uh, conversation. Uh, as well as English is our second language. Yes. Second. Second language, yes. That's the British. Yeah. How long did they stay here? <coughs> Hello, she's asking a question. Yeah. How long did the British stay here? They came uh, from 1890 until 1963. Yeah. So did they dominate the country with the military ships? They did. We had a war with them. 
And now, because they are the one who wrote the histories, they don't write uh, their past shit, you know. They don't write that they got They write that they help us to stop the slave trade, and uh, they help us to use English alphabet in our language because we didn't know how to read, which is not true. Uh, yeah, a lot of things. But we had a war with them just because we wanted to have our own uh, kind of king. And uh, the British government, they say, no, we choose for your leader. And uh, they put the guy in the power and the people of Zanzibar were not happy for that. When we decided to fight, they declare war with that. And now it's the shortest war in history because it lasts only 45 minutes. We had only one battleship, they had five. So one battleship fighting with them and four hitting the island in Stone Town. So tomorrow when you go to Stone Town, you will see small uh, one of the building. It's called House of Wonders. Because this is the place where this Sultan was hiding inside. Yes, and uh, the British bombarded this building until the Sultan surrendered. And within 45 minutes, more than 500 Zanzibari people were already killed. And only one guy, a British guy, was killed. Yes, only one British guy. Five ship versus one. Yeah. Yes. So now they write the history and they write uh, all beautiful stories. Oh, yeah. Yes. They stop the slavery trade. They help our economy. Yes. Some are still here. Some are still here. They're descendants. Right? No. All the British? No. Are they descendants? No. Because most of the time, you know, some of them are still around. Yeah, they descended somebody. In Zanzibar, no. The descendant that uh, left Zanzibar, like Indian and Arabs, that leaves. No Portuguese? Um, you don't really see them, but uh, one day something very strange happened somewhere where the British uh, colony was based, their military. Uh, one lady was pregnant, I think it was 2010. And she went to the hospital and uh, she had very strange disease and uh, there was a doctor from UK she works here and when she tried to do some experiment she said this disease originated from Portugal <laughs> I mean it was like original disease from Portugal yeah and this lady came from this place where Portuguese used to be. yeah used to be yes so but the people, no, we don't have people who looks like. Uh, but we have people with the names, yeah, Portuguese yeah. names: yeah. Ferreira, Ferreira, Dinello, yeah. 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 yeah, yes, Fernandez, Hernandez. Yeah. yeah, but they look like me. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. But uh, white people now they coming here. Uh, they come to live and to. They say investment, yes. They come here to invest in tourism industry. But then they mix with the local African people. And now we have new generation, it's called Cappuccino. Yes, black and white mixed. Yes. Yeah. Did you really call him Cappuccino? Not really, but this is like in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't like it. Yeah, they don't like it. Yeah. We have lots of okay. cappuccino now. <laughs> yes. But that's what they did. That's what remember the guy was saying. This, he loved this place. Oh, he was going on this way. Like, they ain't never left. Yeah, they ain't never left any of these places. They love this place. And, yeah, don't want us to be here. Look at you, funny. And one thing I did notice is a, is a, is a high population of Indians, or maybe, maybe it's not a high population, but I noticed. All the hotels that we go to, a lot of times I see the Indians in charge. Yeah. And, and uh, native or local people working. Yeah. And that's how they go to Brazil too. They Brazil. Yeah, this is. Uh, is it you know, this is. Is it this because is crazy. the have a better this education? Is crazy somehow. One of the things that uh, I was not very happy with my ex wife, she was white, by the way. Oh, okay. uh, she found a job that she didn't have any knowledge of it, right? It's just because that job, the owner of that business is also another white guy. And uh, my ex-wife, she, she was a chef, but then she wanted to become a yoga instructor. She was just taking some classes online, and then she applied for this job. 
because the manager of yoga instructor, uh, she quit the job. And uh, there is assistance manager, she's from here. She's well, like, educated. She know how to do that because she's been working with this ex-manager for almost five years. And then this lady from here, when she applied for that position, they told her, like, no, you don't have that experience to teach people, you know? And then my wife applied, and she explained. She said, like, I don't have that experience, but I have a passion, I can do that. And they, she got a job. And they pay her like 2,500 uh, US dollars. While this lady, she get $300 a month. A month. And she came to me and she was happy. I was like, I was like no, that's not fair. I mean, so this is the problem. When the manager is Indian, yeah, or if the owner is white person, all white people, they would have a very easy job, you know? Yes. Unfortunately, we are not rich enough to own this big investment, so we we work, we work. But you know, when you look at all these vegetarians and all these different, you know, um, things that they have, it seems like we're more than rich. Yeah. Because the food and stuff alone. Yes. And all, you know, yeah. and all, you know, it's just so strange. And my other question, you know, I'm going to ask, or they know I'm asked, what prompted you to buy, uh, marry this white woman? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> That's the same reaction when my mom told me, you know, uh, first time when I told my mom. Because, you know, I was very, a little bit late to get married. As I say, like, we get married when I 18, 25. Until 25, you know, I was single. And my mom was worrying about me. It's like, man, you're 25, now you don't have an excuse. That's the same age uh, when Prophet Muhammad yes, got married. Yes. I was like, yeah, but Prophet Muhammad, his first wife, she was 40 years old. So it's the problem is not me. The problem is every time when I approach 40 years old woman, they say I'm too young for them. And my mom was like, no, you have to get married. When I was 28, my mom, she started crying. Because she felt like I was a gay. I was like, man, what you tell me if you're a gay? I'm like, man, I'm not a gay. I just, yeah. Just not ready to settle down. You're not ready to settle down. But excuse why He's not finished. Uh, no, it's uh, it's called Sunnah. Sunnah is like uh, the same way of life of oh, Prophet Muhammad. For Prophet Muhammad. Oh, for Prophet ah, Muhammad. Yes, yes, yes. So if he did this, we want to do the same thing. Ah, so he get married when he was 25, but his wife was 14. Ah, I but uh, so I think this is kind of Sunnah that most of the people they don't want to do that. Right. Yes. Okay, back to your situation. So when I met this white girl. I mean, we fell in love. It's not like, uh, you know, we fell in love. But it was very uh, challenging to introduce to my parents, you know? Yeah, especially my mom. My, my father was okay. My mom, so it took uh, like every day thinking how I will approach my mom. And then finally I decided to approach my mom and say, Mom, I mean, someone, she's very beautiful. She didn't say that, but in her mind I was like, oh, at least it's a, it's a girl, you know? So I say she's very beautiful and I think I want to marry her very soon. And my mom was happy. So she's and she go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah, Arabs. Yeah. And I say, mom, cool down. You need to have full information about That's this right. woman. <laughs> okay, where she's from? And I say, she's from Spain. And my mom was confused a little bit. She was like, okay, which part of Tanzania Spain is located? <laughs> Oh, my mom, Spain is in Europe. Oh, is she black? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I had to say, no, mom, she, she's white. Oh, she. And uh, no, it, it was a little bit a uh, problem for her to accept it. And when I got divorced, my mom was like, hey, I told hallelujah. you. Uh, yeah, I told you. I was like, mom, divorce is divorce. I mean, yeah. But did you ever meet the wife's family? And yeah. if you did, how was the reaction, as far as you know, towards you and that marriage? Both sides was not very good. Uh, yeah. When I went, I, when I went to Spain, her parents moved to Romania, so I went to Romania to see her parents. And the country itself, to me, was very strange because when I walk around, it looks like nobody have ever seen a black man before. You know, every time I walk, the old folks is coming my way. He see my, I see me. Stop. And then he look. I tell my aunt, well, why everybody stop when they see me? And they are probably, this is their first time to see a black man. Right. Yeah. So that's okay, so they don't know who I am, 
you know, so if they ask who I am, just tell them I'm Barack Obama, because he's yeah. Muslim. <laughs> yeah, they don't know who is Barack yeah, yeah, Obama. Yeah. These people are fools. Yeah. So you met the family. Yeah. And what happened with that one? The mother was not very happy. Yeah, you knew that. The mother was not very happy. She she said in Romania, was like, she asked her daughter, like, why you decided to marry to this black man? After all this news we heard back in Africa, disease, war. Are you sure he's clean? Yeah. Oh, you sure she's clean? Yeah. And then when she said like I was Muslim, her mother was like, are you sure he's not one of the Taliban guy? Back in Afghanistan, I was like, yeah, he's from Zanzibar, not Afghanistan. Yes, so it was just like that, but it's a life. Okay, how long life is about two years. Three years. Two. Okay. Good luck with that. Did you remarry? Did you remarry? Yeah. Now, see me this time. She was 40, same way. Now, which way this time? That was like eight years. Yeah, my wife now, she's she's from here. She's from here, local. Congratulations. Huh? Yeah, she's, she's like, yeah. Because you know, people from here, uh, get in and like the same guy. Right. Yeah. I know, know Nigel and Tim they married them because they know how to marry out. Okay. Yeah, the marriage uh, to the uh, Arabs and Africans is not a problem at all. I mean, yeah, we really? don't really see the big difference. But Indians, it's not possible. It's not possible at all. Not possible at all. Yeah. But my wife now, she's local. She's from here. Okay. Yes. She's, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Just nobody's, okay. And my mom is happy now. Uh, you know, yeah. Happy, happy, happy. When I say, Mom, I want to marry this girl, she was very happy and she was like, I will pay for the wedding. Ah, that's right. Uh, I'm like, Mom, I didn't know that you have money. Ah. <laughs> After all these years, you pay for my wedding. But the most interesting thing on the wedding, I didn't know that my mom can twerk. Oh. that in front of me. Oh. <laughs> I mean, all my friends were like, hey, my mom, your mom can twerk, man. Yeah. 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 I was like, shut up. I asked her, like, mom, I thought you are religious. Hey. You're not. Hey. Yeah, yeah, but you did not. Yeah. Like no. Stop yeah. 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 Wedding, you have to lose all of your religion. Oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, man, where? Because when I used to live with her, music was not allowed in the house. No time. Gospel yeah. music, no time. No music. Because some people say no music, but then when they come to gospel music, they say, well, no, gospel. Music. Even in Islam, like, it's very strange. People they like, say music is not allowed, but there are some. Islamic songs, music. Yeah. Yeah, right. So my mom, she didn't used to listen to music until on my wedding. And I was like, Mom, how did you know all these songs? Yes, I mean, yeah. come on, Mom. She's listening yeah. to Yeah. 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 And our wedding in Zanzibar is uh, it's very nice. We celebrate three days. The first day for the women, I uh, mean, yeah, women's family and the uh, men's celebration. The second day, men's family, and then the last day is like an actual wedding. Oh, or sometimes the first day is an actual wedding, and then the rest of the day is for celebration. Yeah. It's all about dancing and uh, food. That, all right, there you go. Well, who decides yeah. which, which, which day will be blessed? Is it the family, the women's side, women's side, or the men, or both together? Women oh, the women, so the women yeah. families take over everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's your current wife now. Uh -huh. That's your current wife, yeah. present wife. Yeah. But she's not 40. <laughs> Did you continue with the tradition we first started with, or it couldn't be continued because you got divorced? Yeah. You, just, you know. I don't think your first wife was 40. Was she? She was 40. She was 40. She was 40. Yeah, she was. Uh, I was 29. And she was uh, 32. 32, 33. Yeah. yeah. My wife now, she's 23. Nice. And I am 33. Okay. 
When she was uh, when she was 15 years old, she moved with my neighborhood. So you knew her back then? Yeah, yeah. And even my mom, she knew. I think she was less than 15, maybe 10 or 12. And I, I asked my mom one day, as a mom, yeah, my neighbor there is a beautiful girl moved on on this new house. And mom was like, yeah, 30 years in jail. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Stay away from her. So you've already seen her. Yeah, I just say she's beautiful. Maybe one day she'll be my wife. Oh, yeah. see that? And it happened. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 That's a That's a good gap, 2333. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, brother, man. Appreciate this, man. The, the time yes. is gone, but I'm sure we are probably like 15 minutes on the resort, right? So tomorrow you have a Stone Town tour. Uh, yes, Stone Town tour. Uh, pick up time is at 8. Oh, you want to be picked up a little bit late? Yeah, let me look at the schedule. <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, we should be good because uh, we don't have anything going on today. Okay. <laughs> but uh, what I would say, because um, we do need to Stone Town tour as long, so you guys can uh, come get us close to like 8.30. Okay, no problem. It's a private tour, so... And our goal is to leave no later than 9. Oh, ah, okay. And if we... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, 13. I think it'd be perfect if we get here. We want to make sure we get everybody in the bus by 9 so we can leave. Ah, okay. And if anyone wants to take the day off, you can just enjoy yourself at the resort. Did you say that? But I'll just rec since it's the only tour that we have, I just recommend everybody just be ready by 8.30 so we can leave at 9 o'clock in the morning and make sure and then we should be able to get back you know, by 5 or so. <coughs> but it's the only day on tour, so. And I'll go over the schedule also. Okay. 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 Just uh, because, um, and then the same thing in Dar es Salaam, only one tour day. But, uh, but yeah, we had a busy time in Arusha, we were worn out. Yeah. It's nice. And so you did safari or uh, We did one day at a national park, and uh, Eugene got us these cool um, okay. safari vehicles. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's trying to convince us to do like, yeah. three or four days in Serengeti. So yeah, yeah. Let, me just cool. up, let me just upgrade you guys. Yeah. I used to do safari, by the way, before I came back to Zanzibar. My university, I studied about uh, wildlife ecology yeah. and tourism. So then, after school, university, I became like a professional safari driver guy. Okay. And I've been doing that for almost four years. So you did yeah. that here? I mean, you went to no, school? Uh, it's in my basic school here, and then I went to Tanzania for university. Oh. And then I started working there as a safari driver guy. Because there's no safari here in Tanzania. Yeah, and then. I decided to come back to the island to do some other tourism activities. Yes, so it's nice, it's nice. But for me, because I'm from here, it was time when I was like, no, I want to go home. I don't want to stay here anymore, you know? Yes. But it was good. Good, yeah, good experience. Dangerous sometimes, as I was encountered maybe three, four times with the uh, elephant. Yes. Uh, I was in Mikumi, the southern part of Tanzania. I think all kind of safari. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were attacked by elephant, but it was not with clients. It was just the rangers and tour guide. We were talking, and one guy was doing something crazy. The pirate was like scared. <laughs> you know when guys around, yeah? You know, yeah, when guys around, it's like, it's like, hey guys, it's been a while, you've been exercises, huh? You want to do some exercises? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he went to scare an elephant baby. And we start hearing these sounds. And the mama came your way. Yeah, and uh, everybody took. You know, I was in the bathroom, I didn't know that I was in the bathroom when I was hiding myself, you know, I just ran to the bathroom, I didn't knock, I just, you know, but uh, with clients, uh, we had like a lion encounter with tourists, 
and I was so scared, you know. I was really, I think I've never get scared in my life in that day. Because we were just a few meters in front of the uh, uh, lion pride. You know? And things are and the fast. Reason, yeah, you know, we went to the hippo pool. And from hippo pool, we take, uh, yeah, we're getting off the vehicle, take some picture explaining the footprint of elephant and some other animals. And then when I look back, I saw like two lion cubs. They wanted to come to where we, you know, to, to drink water, you know. And I knew that uh, lion cubs don't work alone. They work with the pride. Yes. So I tell my clients, like, we have to go to the vehicle right now. And uh, you know, sometimes white people, when they it's see dangerous situations, <laughs> they don't know what dangerous <laughs> situation is <laughs> like, you know. And I told them, like, we have to go because now we have a dangerous situation. There's a lion cubs over there, and their pride, their family will come back, will come here any, you know. And you know, the white people, they go like, oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I'm from here. I know they are not cute. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's my responsibility to take to make sure that everybody's in vehicle. I think I will be sure that I will be in the vehicle <laughs> watching you. <laughs> and I will take all your expensive cameras and I say, no, I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, I told them like, yeah, we have to go. Oh no, they are so cute. I was like, yeah, they're so cute, but we have to be in the vehicle right, right now. And uh, they didn't want to do that, so I started pushing them, you know. Uh, I was very angry, and I was like, man, I don't care. If the Lion Pride whole family came here, I will run to the vehicle. I don't care about you. You know that. Sacrifice them. Yeah. And then I was pushing. Before we get to the vehicle, the whole Pride came up. There's a lot of blood in their mouth. They killed buffalo. And they were very few meters from us. And when they see us very close to the cubs, the lioness, they become very protective mode. And uh, they look like they wanted to charge us, you know? And, uh, and they did. But we were, yeah, they, you know. But we were very close to the vehicle already. So we just jump inside and I was really scared. And one of the these tourists, she, the one that said, oh, they are so cute. She became very red. And I was like, what's wrong with you? And she said, you know, I'm so scared. I came to Africa to die. <laughs> I just came here to enjoy, you know. I was about to die. I was like, I told you, man. <laughs> You think they look like a pet? No, I'm from Africa. I know about these animals. Yeah. That's the only time it's a situation like that happened because of them. That's the only time. Yeah, ignorance. I mean, yeah, they yeah, feel like they can control all these animals. I and no, I mean, no way. No way. That's why every time when I go to safari with my African tourists, is different experience, you yeah, know? Of course, that's what I'm going to have Yeah, happens. I remember I went to the safari with uh, Nigerian tourists, but they lived in UK. They had very strong uh, British accent. And um, went to safari. We didn't talk that much. I tried to ask her, like, where you from, and blah, blah, blah. And they said, we're from UK with very strong British yeah, accent. Yeah. But then when, the British. Yeah, when we saw the lion for the first time, they get so scared, and uh, somehow the lion, they they hit it also cubs, and uh, our car was very close, so the mother tried to push these cubs and, uh, behind the bush, and you know, they make some sounds when they communication to each other, and uh, somehow the lioness became a little bit aggressive for the cubs, so the lioness stood up and started, you know, pushing the cubs, that's the time when my clients, they were so scared wow. that they lost their British uh -huh. accent. <laughs> oh, wow. This is wild. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 husband, the husband was like, before he was like, yeah, you know what? You know, like a British uh, people. Yeah. 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 How long will we go back to hotel? Yeah. We want to go back to the hotel. And then, then after this situation, this guy was like, my brother. <laughs> 
My wife asked you to move this car. Why you don't move this car? Move this car right now, my brother. I was like, am I talking to another person? I mean, yeah. So, uh, yeah, black people, we know how danger looks like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, every time I've yeah. been to the national park, I mean, we're the only black people there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're trying to, you know, I'm open to it, but it's like, you know, mm. that's, I don't know how dangerous it is. Yeah. I don't want to be responsible for saving my lives. Yeah, it's true. But it's true. Uh, it's true. I guess as long as you stay in the vehicle, you're good, right? Yeah, yeah, when you're in the vehicle, yeah, yeah. This is very normal. You know, when you go to the picnic site, that's, you take yeah. off the vehicle. And every time when I have like uh, some other tourists, they're like, oh, this place is cute. This is beautiful, Baba. Ba. When I go with African tourists, uh, it's safe here. <laughs> yeah, that's why we, we were wondering the same thing too yeah. when we got out. Yeah. We were wondering. It's safe here. Are you sure there is no lion around? Yeah. <laughs> How sure you are? How sure you are? Yeah, that's. It's my question. I'm not curious. Was this those two? No, just two. Oh, just two. Yeah, 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 just two. Okay, so yeah. 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 We know the majority of time is always whites, but if you encounter other blacks, regardless of where they're coming from, on the safaris, have you encountered other blacks? Yeah. Yeah. I have. And how often do you see a little group like us, like all of us? How? Once in a while, how often do you have a group? A group of black, uh, yeah, like um, black people. Not so or many, like, not no. so many, uh, like black people doing kind of these things here. But uh, when they come here, it's cool. I mean, it's yeah, it's cool. Very talkative. Uh, you're easily connected to these people. Uh, one day I had a situation that was for me. It was not very good. You know Gabriel Union? Yes. Oh, don't we? Yeah, with uh, with her husband. Yeah. They came here for the birthday, and when wait wait, wait. yeah, they came here for for her birthday, and I was uh, the tour guide for this uh, for this group. And uh, Gabriel, she was in the vehicle with two white guys. I think they look like FBI. I don't know, but just the guy that they don't talk. They just yeah. 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 And Gabrielle Union, she asked me a question and I was confused. She asked me like, how I see black people? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I see people. When I see black people, I see people like me. It doesn't matter where they came from, but I see my people, whatever they come from, America, whatever. And then she said, how do you think about black America? for the first time. And I was like, man, I don't understand your question. I mean, how, what do you mean? He said, do you see American or do you see African? And I say, since there is a black American in America, so when they come here, they still looks like me, right. like African, but we uh, we have some different like accent and, you know, background. So I still see like Africans, but at the same time, I know that you are married. And she was like, no, 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 just go straight. You see Africans or you see Americans? And I was like, then I was, I was, I was tired with this kind of question. And I just go straight because I know they, they are American. And I said, oh, I see American. And uh, can you imagine she was angry? She was like, why don't you say we, you see Africa? And these FBI guys, they start laughing. Yeah, they start laughing. And I was like, man, don't ask me this question again. I mean... And her husband was sitting there the whole time quiet. Yeah. Oh, what an incredible yeah. story, she man. Because she brought that house. Y'all know that. Yeah. She brought that house. And I think somehow, she, after this situation, she didn't like me. See? <laughs> I can't be, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, if someone not liking you, man, you are... Yeah. But they can't give you dues, man. She's got good energy. Yeah, and I was like... But maybe she's just weird. She didn't bring that boy here. Put that on YouTube. They're trying to put it to a girl. Oh, no, everything is being recorded. Maybe they didn't know. Yes, family, yes, yes.